Hi there, students, and welcome to Crazy Nurse RN Channel. I'm Crystal Mardukanes, nurse educator, teaching fundamentals of nursing practice. If you have any question or if you want to clarify some gray areas with regard to our topic today, please comment down below. I'll be glad to read your comments and answer your questions. Also, if you want to suggest any topic or content for our next videos, please write them below. And if you find this YouTube channel useful, please click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to keep you updated for new video uploads. Please do not forget to check the description below for additional inputs and some clarifications with regard to this lecture video. Also, I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to those who subscribed, liked, and commented on my videos. With all my heart, I sincerely appreciate you guys. So today, our topic is about sensory perception. Okay. So what is sensory perception? It is the process of receiving stimuli or data, either external or internal to the body. So it involves conscious organization and translation of the data or stimuli into meaningful information. Okay. So it's a way of receiving a stimuli or receiving stimuli from the inside or the outside of the body. Okay. So we have here external stimuli. So external stimuli can be visual or sight, the things that you see. Okay. We also have auditory or hearing, things that you hear. Okay. Olfactory, things that you smell. Tactile or touch, things that you feel, okay? And gustatory or taste, the one that you can taste, okay? So it can also be an internal, okay? Your taste can be considered as an internal stimuli, okay? So basically, these are your external stimuli. So it comes from the outside of the body. We also have your internal stimuli, so, we have here kinesthetic. It refers to awareness of the position and movement of the body. So, that is under your internal stimuli. We also have here term. We have here a term, stereognosis, which means it is the ability to perceive and understand an object through touch by its size, shape, and texture. Okay? So, your body would recognize that one. Okay? It's your ability to perceive and understand an object. So, that's a stimuli coming from the inside of your body. We also have your visceral, okay? It refers to any or large organ with the body. Organs may produce stimuli, okay? So, the organs inside your body can actually produce a stimuli, okay? So, meaning it comes from the inside of the body. So, that is why it is considered internal stimuli okay here we have four aspects of sensory process so first we have the stimulus after that receptor then impulse then after we have your perception okay so remember these four processes or four steps okay of uh, acquiring a sensory perception okay so for your stimulus, it is an agent, okay, or an or act that stimulates a nerve receptor, okay. So this is a stimulus, okay, as what I have mentioned, stimulus, an agent or act that stimulates your nerve receptors. Then, your receptor means it is a nerve cell acts as a receptor by converting the stimulus to a nerve impulse. Most receptors are specific that is sensitive to only one type of stimulus, such as visual, auditory, and or touch. Okay, so here we have the stimulus. It could be either internal or external. This then this stimulus will be sent okay to your nerve receptors. Okay, so from your nerve receptors. It will create an impulse conduction, okay? So the impulse travels 
along nerve pathways either to the spinal cord or directly to the brain. Okay. So from nerve receptors, the impulse will uh, an impulse will be created and it will travel along the nerve pathways. Could either be in your spinal cord and to your brain. Then after that, there's now a perception. Okay. It is the awareness and interpretation of stimuli takes place in the brain where specialized brain cells interpret the nature and quality of the sensory stimuli. So the client's level of consciousness affects the perception of the stimuli. So the stimulus has now reached the brain. Then the brain will interpret that stimulus, the message behind that stimulus, then it will then take effect or the body will take action for that. Okay. So again, let's review the four processes. First, we have the stimulus. Then the stimulus will go to your nerve receptors. Then after your nerve receptors, it will make or it will create an impulse. Then we have your impulse conduction wherein that stimulus will travel through the spinal cord or directly to the brain. Then once the stimulus or the message has reached the brain, it will be interpreted okay, by your brain through a specialized brain cells. Okay? Then after that, your body will respond to that message or to that stimulus. Okay? So that's the process of your uh, that's the process of your sensory, okay? How to uh, create a sensory perception. Let's now proceed to arousal mechanism. So we have here reticular activating system or your rest. So it mediates the arousal mechanism. So it is responsible for your arousal mechanism. So we have two components under that. We have your reticular excitatory area and your reticular inhibitory area. When we say reticular, uh, reticular excitatory area, it means that it is responsible okay, for arousal and wakefulness. Okay. This area is responsible for that uh, response. Okay. However, right, however, your reticular inhibitory area functions the opposite thing. Okay, so we could easily differentiate the difference between the two components, okay, under your reticular activating system. Okay. We also have here sensory stasis. So it is a term used to describe the state in which a person is in optimal arousal. Okay, so it's the heightened, okay, it is the, it is the, uh, 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 the heightened arousal, okay, sensory, uh, sensory stasis. We also have here awareness. It is the ability to perceive internal and external stimuli and to respond appropriate through thought and action. A normal and alert person can assimilate many kinds of stimuli at one time, okay? So... The body can actually respond to many stimuli, okay, at one time. So this is called your awareness, okay. We have here states of awareness, okay. So we have the state and the description. So firstly, we have your full consciousness, okay. The person is alert, oriented to time, place, person, and understands verbal and written words. So that is the condition or that is a, a condition under your full consciousness. However, if your patient is disoriented, he or she is not oriented to time, place, or person. Okay. Confused patient has a reduced awareness, easily bewildered, he or she has poor memory, misinterprets stimuli, and has an impaired judgment. Okay. For patients who are somnolent, they have extreme drowsiness but will respond to stimuli. For your semi-comatose, 
patient can be aroused by extreme or repeated stimuli. However, for patients who are in coma, okay, they will not respond to verbal stimuli. So they are unresponsive. Okay. So these are the different or different kinds of states of awareness. Factors affecting sensory functioning. So development stage. Okay. So your development stage can be a factor that would affect your sensory function. Culture as well, it could affect. We also have level of stress, okay? Medications and illness. So it could be a side effect of a particular medication or can be a signs and symptom of a particular disease or illness, okay? We also have lifestyle and personality. So these five factors can greatly affect the sensory function of a person. We also have your sensory alterations, okay? We have your sensory deprivation, sensory overload, and sensory deficits, okay? For your sensory deprivation, it is generally thought of as a decrease in or lack of meaningful stimuli. So as a result, the patient would have altered cognition, perception, and emotion. So basically, when we say sensory deprivation, there is a decreased or lack of stimuli okay, to the patient. On the other hand, when we say sensory overload, it's the opposite of your sensory of your sensory deprivation. Okay? In your sensory overload, generally occurs when a person is unable to process or manage the amount of intensity of sensory stimuli. So meaning there are a lot of uh, messages or a lot of stimuli received by the person, okay, which led him or her to, to not process, okay, which, is, which led her or him to be unable to process or manage the amount or intensity of that sensory stimuli, okay? We also have your sensory deficits, okay? Impaired reception, perception, or both, okay? Of one or more of the senses. So, for example, blindness and deafness, okay? So, in your sensory deficit, it means that the person has a problem, okay? On his sights on his uh, hearing or any sensory uh, or in terms of his or her senses, okay, there is a problem. That is why he has a sensory deficit, okay? So I believe this is the last uh, slides in our discussion. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you learned something today.